Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host. Grandma Gail. So this week we have on A Real Housewife. You guys know that I am obsessed with reality television. And Caroline Stanberry, she's on The Real Housewives of Dubai, which is currently airing in its first season. But she used to be on a show called Ladies of London on Bravo that I loved back in the day. Well, um, not having ever seen any of the things she's done, I'm really excited to speak to her. Okay. All right, guys, we are joined by Caroline Stanberry, one of the Real Housewives of Dubai. You may have known her from Ladies of London back in the day. She also has her podcast, Divorce Not Dead, which I am obsessed with. And uh, Caroline, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Caroline. Thank you for having me. I know. Well, I mean, actually, after seeing um, a little bit about you two, you need to be on Divorce Not Dead. The two of you dating is hilarious. Thank you. Well, I'm not married yet. And grandma's been married 58 years. Correct. Almost 59. So I don't think it's time for me to get a divorce now. <laughs> oh, you're not too, too late. Yeah. Stick with him. Stick with That's him. That's it. I may as well. <laughs> the next no, time we're I saw at the cemetery. Playing, what did I saw a clip then um, of you guys playing with, uh, it must've been a dating app. Oh, yes. Probably. We Probably. do that a lot. That, that's our uh, constant conversation is her dating life and but my what, reaction. Yeah. But what's interesting to me, actually, Caroline, like you often talk about how you don't really need to be with like one person your entire life and that there's kind of new chapters. You've started a new chapter. Grandma Gail has a completely different right. view on it. I've so, only had one chapter, so I can't. Uh, that's that's neither good nor bad. I mean, it's just the way it is. When did you adopt that mindset? Different generation. My, my my grandmother and my mother would probably with be with Grandma Gail, um, but I think I've just I have a completely different mindset, and I've had it um, not probably till I was mid thirties, and I realized actually, um, well, I mean, I sort of I think growing up that's that this whole thing of like um, obviously this thing of like if you have more than one boyfriend, you're a whore. Um, my grandmother used to say to me every time, she's like, I hope you're not going to go, just go out and meet the boy. You know, he should come and pick you up. I said, grandma, if I waited for him to pick me up, I wouldn't leave the house. Right. Um, it's the know, same conversation. It yeah. It doesn't work like that anymore. And I realized that we're setting, you know, then I watched my grandparents, obviously, and they, you know, they actually, um, when they did pass away, um, they passed away within a week of each other, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, just because, you know, they were each other's first. Um, and I suppose being without each other was just too hard. But I just believe today with the way we live, also with mobile phones, dating apps, um, the internet, uh, TV, life is just, you know, it's much more open and it's just, there's so much choice and we evolve in very different ways. You know, I have friends from school my, when I was, who just haven't moved on. They live in the same village. They wear the same clothes. They wear the same, you know, they've got the same high school boyfriend. I go back and I look and I go, I literally like, that's my nightmare. So, um, I don't know. I just, I think I just decided there and then I'm like, I'm not going to beat myself up for any man that I slept with. And I don't want my daughter to feel like she um, can't have a one night stand. And you know, you can't tell anyone if, if it ever happens because then you're an absolute whore and you're gonna be burnt at the stake. And I don't want my daughter to feel like, you know, that she needs to get grab a husband before the age of 30. And I don't want her to feel like if she does make a mistake because you know, you, a lot of times you just don't know who you are or you change that it's the end of the world. There's, it, there's plenty more fish in the sea. Mm -hmm. I like that idea of like taking away judgment for, from all of it. But I feel like when you do have a parent or grandparent that's like constantly putting that on you, how do you either tune it out or like take bits and pieces from the older generations? Because I'm sure there's some things that we can take from them and learn. There's lots of things. I mean, you know, I love my grandparents and they were incredibly old fashioned. My grandmother didn't even know how to like pay a bill because grandpa did it all. She right. never used the credit card. She, you know, just everything. We, he, you know, they're very, very, it was a very old fashioned life. They lived in Park Lane and had, you know, drove, nice. their, <laughs> yes, drove their Rolls Royce around and grandma was always in the back. So she'd never had a credit card. Grandpa paid everything. And, you know, they were very, very sort of um, 
know it's the was time, the don't you think, Carolyn? I mean, that was the times the time. also. It's really a, a different a different era. And you can't do what you did in the 50s and 60s in 2022. It just, it's a different world. Mm -hmm. and Too much opportunity. Yeah, no. especially for women. Especially yeah, for women. You're a living exactly. example of that, no question. There's, there's so much opportunity now uh, out there to do what you want. And I think that's exactly it, actually, because, you know, in, in not that older days, but you know, you, you, you just didn't have, the world wasn't this small. It was much harder to get around and, and it, you know, and, and there weren't the mobile phones and there weren't the, all the, all the just distractions we have today. Women were at home, you know, you're not, you're just, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just saying it's the time. There is no yeah, way around it's reality. It. Yeah. It's a reality. Right. You're actually faced with it. So there's no point telling your daughter that she will, you know, die, go to hell if she marries the wrong man and divorces him. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. You won't. Hopefully, I'm not saying get divorced. I'm hopefully you won't. Right. But if you do, big deal. Yeah. Okay. And you've, Next. you've been living in Dubai for quite a while. Like is the, I mean, I don't know if you see with your daughters or even with your friends who are dating, like is the culture there similar to the United States? Cause I know a lot of areas are like very religious. Well, London where, where uh, Caroline originally I gather mm -hmm. is from. Well, London is probably similar to the U S. Oh, not really. Well, I mean, D Dubai is, uh, it depends. You've got to remember new, uh, D D Dubai is only 19% uh, local. So it's all expats. So we live very, very like normal lives here. But the locals, it's very different. Like mm -hmm. obviously, um, marriage is much more rigid. Uh, rigid, exactly. Uh, and it's and it's still got the old fashioned roles of the women mm -hmm. looking after the men. But they come, they you know, they've come on leaps and bounds even since I've been here um with with sort of more modern marriages mm -hmm. but um i you know i also like that about the way here because you know you are taught that marriage is completely sacred it's not as easy as to get divorced um as it is maybe in uh, you know other countries and you know it's it's a it's a catch-22 isn't it because if you're really miserable you should be let out and if you you know and so uh, you shouldn't be sat for a moment in my mind unhappy because there's no need but then i also believe that us in the western world let ourselves go too easily oh well i'm off you know i've, I've seen someone better so you know there's a middle ground and i don't know if we've found it yet now, I, I'm just curious, how did you choose Dubai? I'm, I, because you didn't start out there um, versus London. I mean, was there, a, was a, did you go to work there? Or was there a reason, a specific reason that you decided to settle there? Yeah, so I had just finished Ladies of London, um, which is another show that you won't know. Um, <laughs> yeah, I loved it. It was like my yeah. favorite. Yeah, yeah it's great. Um, I just finished Ladies of London and my then husband uh, was always working actually for the most of our married life in Kazakhstan, which was 11 hours from London. So I think he, you know, he felt that Dubai, they were opening an office here and it was, it's only yeah. a two hour trip or three right. hour trip now to Kazakhstan. So it just meant that he could, you know, be with his children more. So I followed him. Okay. Um, I didn't think I would be here as long as I have been and love it as much as I do. And now I honestly, honestly can't imagine being anywhere else except so maybe America eventually. Okay. I you, have a, you have a dual citizenship still? Or uh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Are you? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we're a few episodes into season one of Real Housewives of Dubai. What was it like returning to reality TV after all of these years? Well, I mean, it's been, you know, it, it, at the beginning is, I think it's very funny because one of my really good girlfriends is just starting her first ever reality TV show out here. And she calls me up yesterday going, I'm having a mental breakdown. <laughs> this is a nightmare. Wait, is it Lindsay Lohan? No, no, no. Oh. Um, no, she would know um, <laughs> what it's like. This is just literally my girlfriend here who's um, opened uh, her own, uh, uh, her own um, real estate company and they're following her for a channel here. But anyway, the funny part is she goes, she just calls up and she goes, how do you do it? It's a job on your job. And it's the hardest thing I've ever done. And I said, ah, oh, because she, she said you made it look so easy because no one understands how hard this is. You know, I work for, well, I have the podcast, I have a shoe line. I work for many big brands here. I've probably, you know, four or five big, big brands that want 
deliverables every right. every week or whatever it is um hair makeup all the things that go with it right and all the uh, the podcasts these things plus and so when you're working for lots of people not just yourself you have it's like having like eight different bosses plus you have to do a reality show which is scheduling and you know uh it's a full-time job on all of those jobs so and, and the three kids and 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 it's actually well, three enough. children i don't know you're yeah. you're like a super mom <laughs> you're I, I, well, I mean you know I, I i don't know if they tell you that it's very hard <laughs> um because you know i'm i'm never around i'm just always working but i mean it's it's been really difficult finding that balance actually we're just about to go off together now all of us for the summer. but you know it, it was a shock to go back to the system but i'm back and it's um you know bits of it i love and bits of it i find very very hard and how do your kids react to filming do they want to be a part of it i know obviously waivers have to be signed to if they are going to be on and so i'm sure it's a discussion beforehand um yeah i i spoke to them all before and um uh i spoke to them all about it and obviously they um i said to them it's easier just to sign and then on the day that you don't want to do it you don't have to do it yeah i mean you know you're not, not going to force children to appear it, right. it's a grown-up show if they it, you know my daughter's super into it then you'll see a bit of how her. old is she she's um 16. Okay. And then I, likes yeah, it. I have, exactly, it's fun. And then I have one son that kind of, you know, likes to play ball and the other one has uh, literally zero shits given. <laughs> so your biggest beef this season so far has probably been with Chanel Ian. You don't have to obviously like everyone in life, but I'm curious when you're recording a show, like, do you feel like you have to kind of, I don't know, get along or force it? Or do you feel like you kind of, are like, all right, I don't like her in real life and I don't like her on the show and I'm not going to fake anything. Or is it all made up for television or for the reality show? It's not. I wish I could tell you this terrible oh. behavior is made up for the reality <laughs> show, but it's sadly not. Um, look, I think, I, I, yeah, I don't get on with Chanel in real life or on TV life. Um, and I think obviously you go into it and you kind of think, okay, I'm going to, when you get cast for something like this, even if you don't like someone before, you kind of think, okay, I'm going to go in with a new, whole new attitude and maybe it will work. Mm -hmm. But we just, we, it, it just doesn't. It just, for whatever reason, just really doesn't. But doesn't that make better TV? Well, it so does what? for you, not for me. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. <laughs> it, yeah, because yes. people like to see the strife and the irritation with mm -hmm. each other. If everybody's lovey-dovey and everyone gets along, it's not much fun. So the, the, the trauma between the two probably adds to the popularity. Hundred percent, a hundred percent, and it's a new show, so you know um, all of this probably helps. Um, but it's not. On, I wish I could tell you, as I said, we were the great actresses, and this was part of the plan. But it's not. Um, it just, yeah, some people in life just aren't meant to be together, um, bedfellows, and I guess that's us. And do you talk to any of the women when you're not filming? All of them except Chanel and Lisa. Interesting. Okay. Uh, so what else can we expect this season? I know we're going to see the wedding with Sergio. Um, are you remarried? Yes. Okay. Which right. we're going to get into all of that. Good. What else? Uh, uh, wedding, to? new house build, baby, trying to have a baby, all of these kind of things. So oh. I literally did everything on that show that's meant to be, you know, one life experience. It's the most hard thing to do in life. I decided to do all of them in the space of three months. When it rains, it pours. <laughs> I guess. Yes. Um, and I guess you're doing Watch What Happens Live tonight, but this will air after. Uh, yeah. Are you excited, nervous? What was the last time you were on? Uh, six years ago, but I've wow. done it. I think this is my fourth time. Okay. Um, for, for, yeah. So, uh, no, it was really nice because the studio is so small. It doesn't, it just feels like you're sitting mm -hmm. in your, um, in your own, living uh, living room. So it's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. You, you do mm -hmm. we're on the, yeah. And I, I'm doing it with Dorit tonight. So, and I love Dorit, she, you know, she, I was always sort of fascinated by her. So that was nice. And I've met her husband and yeah, it was just really easy and really fun. And obviously, um, uh, you'll see me doing shot skis tonight. Yes. She's going to bring it with a look though. Do you know what you're wearing? I do. Do you think I'm not going head to head with Doreen? No, definitely not. But you'll both <laughs> kill it. I'm sure. It. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what have the reactions been of the people in Dubai when they found out about the show and then also watching it so far? 
Um, the reaction was quite hard to begin with because I think, you know, obviously there's no reality TV over here. There's never, I don't think there's been an international show like this out of the Middle East ever anyway. So it's a, you know, people are always scared of new things, aren't they? And, and how they're portrayed. And I think, you know, I, the biggest hurdle was the name because they hadn't mm. quite grasped that real housewives of Dubai didn't mean real housewives of literally Dubai. Right. So um, it's aspirational or, you know. Well, I mean, we don't depict Middle Eastern housewives yeah, at right. all. So I that's do. what they yeah, right. couldn't get their head around. If you put a whole load of Emirati housewives in, in um, a show, they wouldn't be doing what we're doing. Mm. So I think that confused a lot of people. Um, but now I think people are slight, you know, so we're, we're only episode three and there's a long way to go. So, mm. you know, I think people are getting, are beginning to enjoy it through their fingers. Okay. Um, and you, you film know, it all in Dubai. It's all, fil- it's all filmed there. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, I think it's exciting for some people and other people think it's, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. but like, it's, it's a, it's a hit, uh, whatever we're doing and we're, we're polarizing people, but they're watching. So. Mm-hmm. And then when it comes to the people like in the U S or in the Western world, um, I know like when you think of Dubai, or at least when I did, you think of like gender equality and LGBTQ issues. How do you hope that watching this show will kind of change our perspective of Dubai? I think that you're going to see how tolerant, there's a, you know, there's a minister of tolerance here and a minister oh. of happiness. I think you're going to see how tolerant Dubai is and how many different, you know, how multicultural it is. It's insane. Like everybody lives here. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Right. Okay. I want to talk about your romance and your husband because your relationship is goals. Um, how did you meet Sergio? I, well, when I, before I had my podcast, it was, well, it was, it was a podcast, but it was, I did it a live tour and just before the pandemic actually. And I was doing a live tour. My first uh, actual one was in um, Newport beach. I'd never been to Newport oh, beach California. and Sergio was in the audience. Hmm. <laughs> And he was hot. And he really <laughs> got too. I don't, you know, he's Spanish, so I don't think he knew where he was, to be honest. I think he, you know, he just heard there was going to be a whole load of girlfriends, girls, sorry, yeah. down in, in this room. So he sort of wandered on down to see what was going on. Did he approach you or did you approach him? Uh, it, he came up to me in the VIP room. Um, mm. But actually, I was looking at him for a girlfriend of mine because I, I was really newly separated, just mm. separated as well. So, um i and i i wasn't really thinking anything more but then at the end i kept chemistry his eye. yeah there was so much chemistry in the in the show i kept catching his eye and you know how they always tell you to imagine your audience naked i was like oh i can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so when he left i was outside with my producer on the steps and um i remember i turned to my producer and i said there goes my future husband. Oh, no okay. way. Everyone like yeah. always says that they say that. And it's, uh, when I really do I, so I say it every time I meet someone and it never happens. Well, you would, happens I guess it's very rarely. Yeah. She's lucky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sergio is 18 years younger. Do you feel like, I know in the media people were, he was being called like a toy boy. How do you feel when people say that? And like, do you feel like you get a lot of judgment since normally it's the other way around? I guess that a guy is older. Yeah, when a man does it, they don't get judged. Yeah. Thank you, grandma. I mean, I mean <laughs> I'm with you. Like it's, I do, I, I'm actually, sh- it, it made eight headlines in like eight different countries. It's shocking. I like, you'd literally think I was Hugh Hefner. <laughs> um, I don't, I don't know why. I, like, I think, yeah judgment people wanted to see me flat, fall flat on my face obviously I mean he was really young when I met him he lied to me he was 31 when I met him and he was 24 really oh so I know that's... Benjamin Button went went oh. backwards and I was like oh my, when I found out he was 24 I was like oh my god I'm going to jail and then um you know I don't know somehow it works it really works we've been together three years now uh, my kids. Does he want to have a family? I mean, he does. He does. We've frozen an embryo. Okay. We have a little baby yeah, boy. Because, oh, okay. Because I mean, really, he is young. <laughs> He's a young yeah, man. Yeah. He's twenty-eight now. Right. Um, and he would be good for Kimberly. Stop. No, <laughs> I know. Take it. I know. He really would, though. Um, <laughs> 
but uh, he's so he's he he you're too, she's too young for him. He yeah, actually, yeah, like he yeah. likes older women. Um, <laughs> yes. But uh, it, yeah, but I mean, it's 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 been great, you know. And on the other hand, other people really, I think, are beginning to see it's real now. Okay. Um, and the toy boy thing. Look, he's always going to be my toy boy, isn't he? Regardless of how old I, uh, how old he gets. So, right. so I Love. think he wears it now as a badge of honor. And he's also married me, so he's you know. Is he in the show as well? He is. He is. He's very funny. So the both Grandma Gail and Caroline, you both talk about like being around younger people and that kind of giving you energy and like feeling more youthful yourself. Um, but when do you think, I guess I'll ask the question to both of you, like when does it get cringy? Like, are there any lines you feel like you can cross over a certain age? Like if you're 50, can you wear a crop top or like partying all night long? Like when is it not okay? Who's going first? Well, um, I'll go for it. I don't think there are any rules. I mean, I mean, you know, if you're 50 and you want to wear a crop top, go ahead. As long as you look good in it, I mean, you know, yeah. go for it. Uh, I, I think it's, it's your self-perception of where you are in life. And if you want to hang out with, with young women or young men, you know what, that's that. I think we're at the point, even I, who am really old, <laughs> say, go, uh, you should be happy. And, and, and really, that's part of the things we talk about on the podcast. You really should be happy and not be judged. I think judging somebody else is really wrong. That's my I think. Take. Yeah, I agree. I mean, we were just having this conversation today about crop tops because I've got a few. Um, but I always wear them with super high trousers so that my stomach is covered. So it look, it's kind of a false thing. You know, it looks like you're in a crop top, but you're not really. And or, you know, it's just learning which bits it's like today. I hate my chest lines. So I always I try to find, you know, tops like this. Um, and it's just hiding certain things. But, you know, um, as for my friends being younger, or well, my my husband is is a child, <laughs> and I'm I, my I've got the brain of a child, so I think we're both. Going it's a perfect to, match. <laughs> it's a perfect match, and um, he does keep me young, and he does give me sort of energy, and um, but I am a kind of crazy person anyway. So I think that if you're hanging out with young people, it's because they want to be with you. Um, you can't force them to hang out with you. And, um, you know, it's just, it's what, what your soul is really, isn't it? Yeah. What about her podcast? What yeah. about your podcast? Divorce, not dead. That was my next point. Yeah, so oh, thanks good. for jumping Because that's where, that's what I really um, wanted to hear. Well, I wanted, I guess my first question really is like, do you think it was harder to get back into dating in your forties, like compared to when you were dating in your twenties, or was there really no difference? I mean, I didn't even get to date, did I? Literally, I right, mean, you met him right away, I guess. Yeah, right away, and married him. So I was, I was actually super excited. Um, to I wanted to go on like all my girlfriends were using like Raya and yeah. Tinder and all of these things, and I was like, oh. And I remember when I was married, I used to pop over to my girlfriend's house and help her like, swipe. <laughs> what you do. I yeah. was like, this is like playing snap, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna have a go on one of these. And I, you know, I just never got to do it. But then, you know, I also saw the dark side of it too. So I, you know, I'm, there's a catch 22. I'm really happy that I met Sergio and I, I was, I kind of feel like it was Kim Kardashian's uh, just said, you know, she was, when, when she broke up with Kanye, she was um, DTF down to fuck. Yes. Um, yeah. And I think I was probably there and didn't think that, you know, Sergio was going anywhere long term mm -hmm. with me um but i married him so mm -hmm. so do you think like with when it comes to starting a new chapter after divorce i guess everyone kind of comes to it at a di different point like you seemed pretty ready to meet someone some sometimes people aren't do you have like general advice for women about how to start that next chapter i mean i just think my advice to women is to um if you've made the hard decision to get divorced and you you know women don't just wake up in the morning and go i'm off you know um regardless of meeting someone else or anything else you can't take someone that isn't ready to be taken right um so you know we can all look at a handsome man but it doesn't mean you're running off with him mm. so i think i think by the time a woman has um left she's already you know spent quite a few years or months yeah. whatever leaving in her head 
-hmm. before that. So um, I would say that if you've been able to make that decision and make that move, don't question yourself because so many women live with that terrible regret or um, what if, or should I have? And I just think I sort of have this way where I can compartmentalize, which is like, I just close a door. I mean, I look at, I was, I spent 18 years in that marriage and I look at pictures now and I barely recognize or remember that's part of my life. I've moved so far on. And I try and always say, look forward, don't look back because you can't live there. I have women friends of mine that just have just collapsed after, after um, getting divorced. And it's so sad because, you know, you'll, you, you need to sort of go forward in with, you know, life. I think you have to grieve the loss of a relationship. And then, as you say, move on. Sometimes you grieve it while you're still in it. That's okay. I think that's what most women do. Right. Because, and that's why you sometimes know, you stay in the relationship. Yes. Because mm -hmm. it's not, that's exactly what I'm saying. I think most women do the grieving for their relationship in, in the relationship. That's because true. Because they've, they've understood by the time you've left, you've already gone through all this thing, my children, my oh. this, you know, how's my life going to be with, I, you know, I remember lying in bed thinking, oh, I can't get divorced. I'm going to miss the noise. You know, I need to be with my kids every day. You know, how am I going to wake up without them and go to sleep without them? You know, um, all of that stuff was the stuff that held me there. Mm -hmm. But actually it's, it, 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 I realized it's, it, I sort of tortured myself for much longer than I should have. Okay. And the, the life after divorce isn't terrible. The kids, um, you know, I get, I get them one week, one week, and we're only down the road from each other. And invariably oh, one, yeah, invariably one of them comes home when on, on, on his week anyway. So my house is, all, and every weekend they're here, they, you know, because all they like their room. Um, so, so, you know, I'm never alone. And frankly, the three or four days that I do get some time on my own, I'm quite happy to have yeah. peace. Another topic you talk about on your podcast that I thought was interesting was um, you said like not to equate love or finding love with financial stability and not to kind of think about money when <laughs> see that face. This is why I'm bringing that up. I think grandma is going to disagree with that. I'm going to disagree, but I want to hear what Caroline has to say. I also did Caroline have her own money when she went into her first marriage? No, look, I, I had enough money to have my own house my and but I had to pay all the bills. Right. So, but that's not, you know, I still, I, my parents taught me to look for money. Mm -hmm. um, and my grandparents wanted money. I've come from an old English aristocratic family. We're in Debrett. Like, you know, you think they wanted me just marrying the guy off the street? No, I was a debutante. Absolutely not. Um, my, what I've learned is, you know, and that's not to say, look, Sergio came with his own money, but not a lot of it compared to what I have, right? because he was 24 years old i mean you know right. how rich were you at 24. Right. um so it's just different right but i know he got his masters he got his degree he's not stupid he's he'll smart. get there he's right. smart and he, he's and, he, and also having been a soccer player and you know got his uh, masters and his degree while he was playing soccer that shows to me he sticks at things he's determined and he's not lazy so therefore I can work with that. Right. And I've been with money or had, you know, had that kind of thing. And I, you know, let me tell you when Sergio has it, he's, I mean, my birthday present this year was bigger than anything that my ex-husband gave me, um, uh, in the form of a check. So there you go. Um, uh, which was really, really nice and a complete surprise. And also things like, um, for me, I just want a relaxed household. If I'm happy and relaxed and I'm not stressed, I can make money. I'm happy. I don't need a giant house. In fact, my parents brought me up in like a, you know, 25 bedroom bloody castle. And it was just more hassle than it's worth. And it's a money pit and it's just stressful. And all you do is have to entertain other people. And I just don't want that life. Sergio and I've just bought a beautiful house. It was going to be perfect. And it's like 6,300 square feet. Which is still pretty our, big. Our, <laughs> for our, yeah. our, our audience well, will, will be shocked. I mean, that's still considered. You in, well, you're in New York, aren't you? Right. Yeah, so, yeah, so everything's, yeah, I'm I'm not. But, right. um, so, you know, that's small that's for great. me. And it's, it's, I just don't, I look for different, different things now. And, and I know that Sergio will grow into the man that I need him to be because he loves me so much. And that's it. And that's enough. Mm -hmm. 
That's great. Good enough for you? No, well, this guy sounds like a dream. Yeah. But most most people are, don't aren't as lucky as she. Well, I guess like of course if it's between happiness and like financial stability, like bit. hopefully people pick happiness. But I guess the goal is like both. Well, no, I think it makes it easier. Nobody has to. What I've always said is, you know, there's certain focuses that you end up having fights over, and it's usually sex and money so uh, or children so those are your three things there's very little else to fight about we're not settling world issues um and if you have it it makes life a little easier that's all i, it I don't makes life easier but it you know i've i've had girlfriends of mine who've married money and ended up with none because right. you know unless they're right. unless they're literally writing you a check when she goes down the right. down the aisle it's not her money so you know, at the end of the day, she's still in the same position. And with that money normally comes a woman that needs to be subservient, move into his world, put her, you know, and that's, that is your world, but it's probably not, yeah, it's not Kim's world, right? So right. Kim doesn't, Kim sounds like she's quite feisty and funny and she doesn't want to move into some, some guy's house and just put one photo down and say, okay, it's, I'm okay with that and be subservient to him. And so that's, you know, two, in, two income houses are great. And that, you know, also the, the generation that you grew up in um, compared to today is completely different. They don't have these giant, you know, jobs anymore where everybody's, you know, making million dollar bonuses, $2 million bonuses anymore. So it's really a two income team house. And to be a team, you have to just, you, that's built on love. And I've been watching a load of documentaries lately, weirdly, of some of the most successful couples. And one of them always takes the back seat to the other um, and builds a brand together and has like just, you know, pushed each other as one team, one house, one purse. And that's, you know, that's sometimes way more powerful than what you probably wanted for, for Kim, which is what my parents wanted, which was some banker wanker who brought <laughs> home, you know, um, jewelry to me for, you know, Valentine's Day. And I lived in this, you know, it just, it just doesn't, it just doesn't it, yeah, follow your heart, Kim. Thank you. Uh, so I want to end the episode with a game we play with all our guests called Grandma Gail's Old Fashioned Dating Quiz. So basically, we go through some scenarios, hypotheticals, um, and we will deem whether you are more of a modern dater or more of a traditional I know dater. the answer already. So. I don't. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the first one is, would you rather receive a call or a text from the person you're with if it's just to say hi? Oh, God, probably a text. Isn't that awful? <laughs> No, I'm the same. Uh, yeah. Would you sleep with someone on the first date? Yeah. Dating apps or setups? Oh, maybe a setup. Okay. Move in together before getting engaged or wait until you're engaged or married to live together? Move in. Know what you're buying. Mm. And who should pay for the date? Should it be one person or should you split or alternate? Him. But I mean, if it's if you, I, if you, all the time, it's always nice to take one, but him, sh he should be the first date, 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, more of a modern dater. Absolutely. But <laughs> too traditional in there, so a little mixed. Okay, Caroline, thank you so much for joining us. Tell our listeners how they can follow you and watch Housewives. Um, thank you for having me. And you can follow me on Caroline Stanbury. You can um, go on all platforms for um, uh, podcasts, Apple, Spotify, etc., for Divorce Not Dead and C. Stanbury on Twitter. And every Wednesday night after Beverly Housewives of Beverly Hills, I think is uh, I'm not in, in America, so I think it's uh, is is um, Housewives of Dubai. I'm, I'm going to watch it now, pal, oh, and I'm okay, so excited. Yeah. I can't wait. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode with Caroline this week. It was so great talking with her, and I'm excited for the rest of this season. And you guys should check out her podcast, Divorce Not Dead, if you want to learn a little bit more about her and divorce. Well, I think divorce her style. <laughs> yeah, she, she maybe not Grandma Gail style. Not Grandma Gail style, but she's certainly very entertaining. Okay, and you guys know how to follow us on Instagram. It's at excuse my grandma, same thing on TikTok. Rate us five stars if you haven't yet. Share with your friends, and we'll see you next week.